seems that everyone can hear okay. So yeah, like I said, I'll go ahead and get started. Thank you so much for joining today's webinar about how to effectively use data to boost SharePoint and Microsoft 365 adoption. Before we get started, uh, a little bit of housekeeping. This webinar is being recorded. If you want to share this with a colleague, we're going to be sending an email with the recording after today's session. And of course, if you have any questions, we'll leave some time towards the end of the webinar for questions. Uh, you can send those questions through the questions box within the GoToWebinar panel, uh, where you have just uh, told me that you are able to hear me. So like I said, just submit all your questions as we go through the webinar. So in regards to the agenda for today's webinar, we will start out with a very short introduction. I'll talk a bit about Cardiolog Analytics and who we are. Then I'll talk about collecting and analyzing data insights as a way of boosting adoption. We are focusing solely on that topic today, so I want to go into a lot of detail regarding that. And then I will jump into a presentation of Cardiolog Analytics and show you how data should be leveraged and what data should be leveraged in order to boost adoption. And as I have mentioned, at the end, we will have time and I'll be taking some Q&A. So feel free to send your questions throughout the course of this presentation. So just a quick introduction. Cardiolog Analytics has been providing analytics for 365 for about 17 years now. We started back with SharePoint on-prem and we grew with Microsoft to the cloud. And today we track everything from SharePoint um, to Teams, to Yammer, to Viva, OneDrive and so on. So just a little bit about our vision as a company. We've been working with our customers for, well, about 17 years now. Our goal is to help our customers to constantly improve SharePoint based on how it's being used. So there are four main pillars that we talk to our customers about. The first pillar is monitoring activity, which is tracking the usage within SharePoint and within Microsoft 365 platforms with in-depth intranet analytics, insights, and usage reports. Our customers realize that understanding usage analytics is often simply not enough. They wanted a way to take action based on the insights gained from monitoring their portal usage. The second pillar is engaging users, asking them what their needs are, what their pain points are, and what's not working for them. And then enhance. We want to make sure that we are constantly improving SharePoint and Microsoft 365 platforms based on these pillars. And the idea is to have actionable metrics, which will allow us to constantly make SharePoint better for our users by increasing corporate productivity and improving portal ROI. And then the final pillar here is incentivize. We can turn that data into a game as well. So instead of just the admins owning the data, we can make sure that those end users also have access to the data and can see how they compete with their colleagues, uh, get points, coins, and we conclude by seeing how we can turn that raw data into exciting gamification and leverage that within our organization as well. It is very important for organizations to be able to quantify your investments, to know your Microsoft 365 investment has been worth it in the short and long term, and to take action to get the most value out of your investment as possible. So SharePoint and Microsoft 365 reporting tools, such as Cardiolog Analytics, and Gamify also that we, were, that we are going to talk about today, give you the capability to know how well your users are adopting those platforms. Because as you scale your growth, 
you can also use this data to build your digital transformation programs and implement adoption practices to strengthen any weak SharePoint or Microsoft 365 adoption areas and help your organization to make better decisions regarding their platforms. So let's hop into a demo environment to see exactly how we can monitor, engage, and gamify all of this data. So here you can see a list of some of the many out-of-the-box dashboards that Cardiolog Analytics customers get. These dashboards are built on topics of interest to our customers, such as um, user adoption, search analytics, and here towards the bottom also navigation. Today we'll look through a couple of these dashboards to show you some of the data that you can get with Cardiolog Analytics. So the first dashboard is showing us a high level adoption across 365 because these are some platforms that users are adopting well to and maybe we should focus on other platforms. Maybe for example we see um, teams uh, where we can see maybe that we have less adoption potentially. So it helps you to know which platforms to focus on. In our next dashboard, let me hop into this one real quick. This is more of a SharePoint centric dashboard and here you can see on the far left side the SharePoint hierarchy where of course we can track hybrid deployments of SharePoint on-prem um, and SharePoint online as you can see in my demo and you can map out all of your sites. Yeah, I have my HR site, IT and we can of course drill down to lists uh, libraries down to list item level so it is very easy to report on anything you want within SharePoint all the way down to list item level like specific pages documents announcements uh, really any content that you'd like to report on and looking at some of the content I have in this chart and table we can see let me Go into focus mode so you can see better. We can see the most active or the most popular content based on these page view numbers. So if we, for example, launched a new HR site or we have a new important policy, we can see if people are actually taking advantage of that new content. And once we know about this, we can launch a campaign and make sure people are in fact aware of that wonderful new HR site or that super important policy. But I can also flip that around. And now I'm showing all of the inactive content. So this is the content not being used often, or in this case, with all these zeros, not at all. And that could be whether, whether it's sites or documents or pages, but maybe entire sites people are not accessing. Um, it is because they are old and no longer needed and we can then archive them, or perhaps it's new content that our users are simply unaware of. So once you know about that, you are empowered to take action and make the improvements needed. Um, whether you choose to delete or archive or notify everyone about it, um, maybe making it easy for them to um, find that content by adding a link from the home page or launching a campaign to tell them. Besides the views, you can see when last the content was accessed, the duration or how long the content was viewed for. And of course, you can customize all of this. So if you don't care for the number of likes or page load time, you can remove those columns and add other columns of data instead. So that's the action we can take based on what's most popular and also the unused content. But besides that, we can see even more information like everything from who owns this content to the size of the content and that will also help you take action just as an example with really large content um, the admin can find out who owns this content and they can contact that person who is the owner of the content and tell that owner that they have um, one month 
or two months, 60 days to get rid of it, to take action to improve it, or that content will be deleted. So if we go back and we have a look here at adoption, yeah, I'm showing the active versus the inactive users. Trying not to hover right there so you are able to see well so these pop-ups don't disturb. Um, so that is how you know who is not very active or who is extremely active. And obviously those who are not very active, um, you'll know who they are. So you will be able to target those who maybe need more training and those who need support in order to improve the adoption rates. And below that is also a breakdown by departments, but it's also customizable and it can be any attribute you'd like to use. Um, it could be region, it could be country, it could be branch, job title. And everything here can be filtered and sliced. If I click on a department such as um, sales, Um, it will filter the entire dashboard for just the sales team. So all of this data only reflects the sales team. Um, and now I can see exactly the content that they are interacting with or vice versa. If there's specific content that someone cares about, I can click um, there to filter the entire dashboard for just that particular content. I'll quickly do that for benefits, but you get the idea you'll be able to then see which department is mostly using that content. And then if we have a look at search optimization even deeper, we will go to that particular dashboard. So is everyone looking for the same document or page? If so, let's surface that content so it's easier to find. Here on the left, you get your top search terms. In this case, the top search term again is benefits. So if everyone in the company is searching for the term benefits, uh, let's filter the entire dashboard by that one search term. And here you can see benefits has been searched over 1100 times. And so for example, I multiply that by over 60 seconds per search. It is a lot of time wasted looking for one piece of content or one search term. So what I want to do is, now that I know about it, I can surface it. Maybe I can add a link from the home page with the employee benefits, and that will save a lot of time that's currently spent searching for that content. And what will that do? It will obviously also improve the overall productivity in the organization and help adoption as well. You may need to also look more in, in depth into your search schema or queries in order to improve them as well. If you have existing content on benefits, uh, you may need to optimize that content or improve the search scheme to assist your users in connecting to it. If you don't have a lot of helpful content regarding benefits, then this would be a key indicator to start creating content to help your users get the information they need. Because as technology becomes easier to use, people will come back and they will use it more often. So if we continue here, if we look at some other dashboards, um, oh, before that, I quickly wanted to tell you about successful versus failed searches. At the top here, we can see, and it's actually something quite concerning because it's quite a high failed search rate. And that means that, as you can see, only half of those users actually clicked on the results. And it means even more time is being wasted as well. But once uh, we have the data, we have a way of making improvements and we try to translate this raw data. Here we are translating it into time. So you can also see um, we are losing about 94 hours of lost productivity because of failed search. Going beyond usage, there's also usability. Here at the bottom right, once it's unloading, I'll show you. Also page load time by geography. So 
is your SharePoint portal loading slow in specific parts of the world? Uh, or you can drill down to a state or territory, city and branch. Um, and we look at responsiveness. I'm trying to show you a couple of dashboards. Um, the slow page report template identifies the pages on your site that take the longest to be displayed to your users. So if there's a lot of content loaded by the site owner on a single page, um, it will cause that page to take many seconds to load. And that could actually be a reason no one is adopting their content. But now that you have this, you are aware of that. Um, and that's when we are now able to take action to make those improvements. Um, I want to also show you navigation. So all you have to do is to select a URL that you are curious about. Maybe an important announcement or a blog post, maybe your home page, and then find out what the previous page is, how folks get to that content or where they are going as the next step in their journey. So for a more in-depth journey or funnel, we can build those here very easily. I'll quickly show you what I mean. So, there we go. It'll take basically the most popular route that people are navigating through in SharePoint. There we go. You will go all the way, level two, level three, level four, level five, level six. So for example, what we see there at level six, um, we'll be able to see where most users end up. So for example, um, if all of them ended up at um, uh, training videos, for example, then that will help us and that will inform us to maybe add a link to this content whenever they reach the portal homepage. And that can save on the extra steps you need to take in order to get to that content after six steps. So basically the more insights you have on users' behavior, the more empowered we are to make the tweaks and to make the changes to make SharePoint and Microsoft 365 a better experience for your users. I want to hop into our augmented analytics. So besides the dashboards, we also provide augmented analytics right on the page itself, as you can see here. Augmented analytics drives SharePoint adoption and uses productivity with SaaS-based data analytics, maps and insights. It pinpoints problematic areas on the SharePoint page so you can take action based on the data. So what's really neat about augmented analytics is that the insights are actionable because it connects directly to an action you can take to solve a problem on the platform. These actionable insights are extremely helpful because they serve as a guiding light for what you should prioritize on your platform to help drive business productivity. Visualizing the track data in different formats also helps with easy interpretation and analysis. We actually track every single click that the user makes and we are able to display that data in different ways. So let's look at a few examples here. You can take here really any content within SharePoint and then we'll add a few layers. So first of all, here you are able to see each and every click that is performed on the page and you can see around most of the buttons and headings and um, images we have the most clicks. You can see a few random ones over the white area but if you prefer to see button clicks by number you can also object it and then here if you hover over um, each of these links for example we'll see the total clicks on that link or that image so we can see aggregated total links on each 
link button or the actual clicks or points. We can also visualize that as a heat map to emphasize even more where the hotspots on the page are, for example, similar to the cardiolog analytics data you have in the reports. You can also use different kinds of filters here with the data. So first of all, you can also filter it by date. You can customize the date filter. Um, we can also filter by department and by location. But something that's even more amazing is the other layer, which is out insights. Because we know not only where they clicked on this page, but also on the next stages, we are trying to help customers not just get the data, for example, a thousand clicks and so forth, but also add some insights to them as well. So here, for example, we are saying, let's take this one. We are saying that 74% of visitors who clicked on this link to view this list of all articles clicked on the third article on the next page. And then it tells you what you can do to improve this. Add a link to it directly on the home page and save up to 104 minutes a week. You can save a lot of time if you make it easier to get to that content quicker. So the idea with these insights is to go one step beyond just that raw data of number of clicks, but to give additional insights for our customers on where they might want to take a little bit more notice and suggestions on how they can improve different areas of the page. So now I also want to show you Gamify. So the next part will be aimed at the end users. How do we take all that rich data and turn it into more of a game or more of a competition? So have a look here at the SharePoint page. Here at the top, we have our gamification ribbon. And we are playing as Jack. So for every action Jack makes in SharePoint, whether it's viewing or counting, liking, commenting, creating new content, he will get points, or in this case, coins. And you can assign a specific value of coins for different actions. So if you want to promote more social actions like liking or commenting, that might be worth 10 coins, whereas viewing content may only be worth a single coin. So as Jack goes through the day and gets points or coins, uh, he will also get these badges where he can see how he is accomplishing them. This is both an individual question where Jack can be against his colleagues in his, in his own department. So these are all from the QA department. But it can also be against other departments. So this is Jack's apartment and they are now in fourth place. And like I said, against all the other departments. So if you want to make sure that managers are encouraging their employees and their teams to use 365, yeah, that group on petition can really show that. We typically reset the game uh, every week or every month. And here you can see the winners of the last week or last month's competition. So we can congratulate them and they will appear here for the entire next week or month. And then finally, and that is a great way to encourage them to use SharePoint more. And then we have all the important insights as well. Let me close this and show you. Um, so finally, we have all the important insights. So if everyone from the QA team read the CEO blog, we can recommend that for Jack as well. And then he's both discovering new content that might be interesting to him. And of course, also gaining points for consuming that new content. So that was a very brief walkthrough of the power of data and how we can take that data and turn it into engagement and also gamify that data and leverage gamification to make the 
being productive and the adoption a little bit more interesting, competitive and fun. So I will conclude our time for today with some questions. If I have time, I don't really have time, so I'm just going to take one question. Let me open this back up. Um, I see I have two questions. I'm only going to be, I already went over my time, so I'm just going to um, answer the first one and the second one um, I will send to that person via an email. So I have a question from uh, Pavan uh, regarding exchange and OneDrive analytics. I'm just scanning a question. So yes, Pavan, you're basically asking if we can track those platforms as well. Um, yes, we can. Uh, we also track Teams. And there wasn't enough time today to also show you Teams. But yes, we can track all of those other um, platforms. Um, okay, I'll quickly answer the last one also. Um, what is the licensing for this? So uh, the license is a yearly subscription based on the number of users that we will be tracking. I'm a, going to wrap up our session today. As a reminder, we have recorded this webinar and we'll be sending out a recording tomorrow or early next week for you to share with your colleagues who are unable to attend. Um, please visit us at cardiologanalytics.com to book your free demo or your trial for any of the solutions you saw here today or our engagement solution Engage. And we will have another webinar in a few weeks time after Christmas and New Year and we'll show you more about that webinar as well and how you can use the features to actively drive adoption and productivity. And for more information and helpful tips, you can check out our blog at blog.cardiologanalytics.com. And for more information, you can contact us at info at cardiologanalytics.com. And yes, uh, thank you to everyone who joined us today and who sent in their questions. And we will speak to you hopefully soon. Take care and have a good rest of your day.